about this uh, during we were 2020, 2021. I started thinking about this. I think there was a time that is obvious or for obvious reasons, right? Um, we were we were having time for looking in, inside or looking around or looking toward our most relevant people, our family and so on. And I, 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 I think that sometimes happens like that for some musicians. We just get a spark of, this is what I need to talk about. Hey everybody, Mike Jeffers, Chicago Jazz Magazine, chicagojazz.com, and welcome to another episode of Around Town. And today, I'm very happy to actually finally connect with Javier Red. We've been going back and forth on emails probably for years now, but we're finally actually connected. He's got a brand new recording out, Life and Umbrella, of course, with Javier Javier's group, Imagery Converter. We're going to talk all about that. He's got two shows coming up celebrating the release of the recording, Friday, August 11th at Constellation, and then again, Wednesday, August 30th at the Jazz Showcase. And Javier, thanks for taking some time. I know you're out on vacation over in Europe, so that's pretty exciting, but I'm glad we're able to talk. And the, the beauty of Zoom, we're able to plug and talk and learn about this brand new recording you have out. So thanks for being on the show. Mike, thanks so much. You are right. I think I have been chasing Chicago Jazz Magazine and you for a long time, but, <laughs> but I'm super happy to be able to do this interview. Thanks so much. Well, abs absolutely, absolutely. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this. So your group, Javier Red's Imagery Converter, and the new recording is Life and Umbrella. And tell us about how life and umbrella like the concept behind you even thinking about doing life and umbrella and coming out with that concept how how did this whole concept come about um i started i started thinking about this uh during we were 2020 2021 i started thinking about this i think there was a time that is obvious or for obvious reasons right um we were we were having time for looking in, inside or looking around or looking toward our most relevant people, our family and so on. And I, 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 I think that sometimes happens like that for some musicians. We just get a spark of, this is what I need to talk about. This is what I need to, to communicate. And it was very clear to me that, uh, I, I I got this idea, this sensation of as a, as a dad of, of, a, of a kid with autism, we, we, we get to know things that if you're not aware, you, you just, you know, sometimes you, you miss it. So uh, very, very simple examples, like going to a place and then people greeting you. And then if, I will not be aware of autism. I will be like, oh, that person was, you know, the the, the salutation was a bit awkward or something. <laughs> and uh, and then you just get like, oh, that person might have autism. <laughs> so um, I, I thought it was great to convey the message with music because it's my language and to see how to to get people into the this internal world, this internal, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, um, emotions and uh, things that happen ar ar around a kid with autism. You know, I, and, and the name of the recording, Life and Umbrella, and I know umbrella is kind of like an umbrella. Autism, autism is an umbrella term for all of the different, you know, disorders that come with autism because there's a huge spectrum of that, and they all say it's under the umbrella, right? Is that how the 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 name came about? That's exactly how it came about, Mike. You, you you did you did a great you did a great research over there, exactly. So that how for me it's like how that you know somehow you get a word the kid gets a word of mm -hmm. of, of his condition, and 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 then you know that has to be taking place along together in parallel to life, right? So 
So yeah, that's his life and umbrella. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and I did some work with the Autism Society of Illinois years ago, so I'm familiar somewhat with it. But, you know, the, going through the whole process, though, I mean, you you have, what do you have, 10, 10 or 12 recording uh, songs on this recording. And I'm always curious because, you know, to your point, you said, you know, that your language is music. And uh, and I love the fact that you talked about in the, during the pandemic, you kind of had a, a an I you know a, a way just like everybody, right? Everything just stops. So all of a sudden you're kind of reflecting on things. How do you go about composing? Like uh, starting at tune one or tune two, and you start putting it together. Are you are you relaying the experiences you had with your son over the years and remembering certain certain things that happened or certain certain different you know, experiences he might have had and said, you know what, I'm going to focus on that experience and try to write something that would convey that out in music. It is, it is very, it's pretty similar as, or I think you're portraying it in the right way. I, I, I sort of uh, wrote down ideas that came up uh, on the one side, uh, what is my interpretation? of a kid with autism um, related to the specific experiences I was having, right? Like, oh, I like, I remember this experience, I write that down. I remember this other experience, I write that down. Yeah. I remember, you know, like looking at him and seeing this or feeling this, writing that down. And on the other side, I was also writing down the musical ideas, right? Like, uh, like phrases, like, like rhythmic patterns that I like to use in my music. And then kind of trying to relate both things together. Like, oh, I think this is gonna be fitting for this and this and this. So yeah, kind of a that was that was the trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it, I mean it's interesting listening to it. And I always like when I understand the concept behind an original recording. You know, I mean when you when you listen to tunes and you listen to groups play and they're playing standards, I mean you you know kind of the history of the standard, or at least even if you don't and you're somebody you, you know the melody or something and you can connect with it but it's really difficult when it's an original piece and you put it out and there isn't any context behind it so i really like what you wrote in the press release that you sent over and all the press information that sent over it really explained it and then when you do a little bit of deep diving and just some quick research and looking up kind of the titles of the tunes like just for, for one example so people kind of get an idea and of course everybody should go check out javierredmusic.com because that's where you can pick the recording up and listen to the whole thing and and buy it and then of course august 11th the constellation and three thirty one eleven north Western Avenue, constellation-chicago.com. And then again, Wednesday, August 30th, Jazz Showcase, 8 and 10 p.m. Of course, we all know it's 806 South Plymouth right there in the South Loop, jazzshowcase.com. So it, just for a little context for the uh, for the viewers and listeners, um, like for an example, I sort of had an idea and I did a little research on it. And one tune that you have, Imaginary Friend, right? And it's, it's not uncommon for people with autism to, to have imaginary friends and sometimes they, they didn't really realize that right at, at first because yeah. they were did not thinking that autistic people could actually have imaginations and then suddenly they realize an imaginary friend so is this like that tune specifically is that something that you related to and you said you know what my my son had an imaginary friend i'm going to write something to it and it's real interesting too the way the music kind of lays in there once you know what that's about you can kind of envision what you're listening to and what you're trying to convey, which is, which is dynamite. So talk a little bit to, uh, about some of the titles and about some of the tunes and, and how you, yeah. your group plays off of each other and how it relates to the concept and the, and the um, subject matter. Sure. Sure. Mike. Yeah. Um, when I'm in, uh, this is a, a small note. When I'm doing these shows, contrary to the majority of jazz performance, I like to explain a bit of each tune. Good. So like people to get that, more specific image or you know like uh idea of what the tune is, what, what is going on in the tune so for example uh major it friend you, you said you said it correctly i i think it was especially strong when he was coming he was very young five years old or something and somehow he was doing things in such a way that everybody was uh more 
on the sensation that that imaginary friend exists actually <laughs> like oh he might be a person in this cool you know because he was he was he was talking about him like so vividly so concrete that that um th that was that was like a like a, a very strong experience um uh, like that for me was making that special in, in or like more special right and there are other tunes so for example um there's another one which is in Jewel world so i i like to see when um you know that they kids get kind of absorbed they get into themselves if you are if you are looking at them they, they might be just like staring at something and you might be thinking like oh well maybe nothing is happening but actually a whole bunch of things are happening internally to them. They are having a very vivid internal world going on. They might be, you know, imagine a, a story or, or 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 things in the past or something, but it's so strong that they are really living that inside, right? So yeah. that's another example of a title. And um, I can I can go. I can go for let's let's go for another one just like easy and and then and, and fast. Um, there's there's one which is um, um, uh, this is this is what they found where is when well actually you you communicate the kid that he has autism you you got it and and uh, the way of trying to assimilate that it it is a whole journey right so. Well, let's keep it as that and let's leave more for people to go to the shows. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly, exactly. So JavierRedMusic.com. Now, with, with this recording, it seems to me like you're really going to bring a, 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 a shine a lot of light and bring people into the understanding of what autism is. Because even now, I think a lot of people know the term, but they don't really know what it is and they don't really know what the person who has it might be experiencing. And also, I don't think they really understand the huge spectrum of autism and how many different, you know, you could have have it over here, or you could be all the way over on the other side of the spectrum, which is a completely different thing. So it's really interesting. And was that part of your mission too, to put this recording together is kind of shine a light on autism and kind of bring it a little bit more to the forefront or not that it's not in the forefront, but at least give people more of a context of what it is so they know what it is. Yes, yeah, just like I, I, I see that people with autism they put a lot of work, hours, hours per week in in workshops for trying to understand more people without autism. How do we behave? How do we, how do we have a conversation? What are we trying? You know, what do we mean with certain things, certain face, uh, fa you know, facial intonations that we can do when we are talking. And, and and on the other side, um, we people without autism, we don't put a single uh, hour per year in trying to understand them more. So my intention was that, but through an emotional, through an emotional connection rather than an intellectual paragraph or conversation more through an emotional co connection. Yep. Well, I, I'll tell you what, listening to it, and this is another one of those recordings, and I always tell people, I, I listen through it, but really there's so much interaction going on within now that you kind of understand what the concept of the entire recording is about when you sit and listen to it and really delve into what it is. And if you listen and read the title and understand what that is, and then you listen to the music, it changes the whole concept of what you're listening to, which is what I love. I love, I love about it. So JavierRedMusic.com, And then of course, Friday, August 11th, the constellation.com. And then again, Wednesday, August 30th, jazzshowcase.com. Tickets are available both websites. And obviously he's got links on his website as well to find, get you over there. But let's talk a little bit before I let you go. Who's on the recording? Because uh, these are familiar names uh, to, to me at least. And, and uh, you guys play together so well. So talk a little bit about the group. Thank you, Mike. I I have I'm very lucky to have uh, my friends Gustavo Cortinas on drums, Jake Wark on the tenor sax, and Ben Dillinger on the bass. They have been they are not that young now anymore. But when we started, which was like five years ago, to really get together, 
especially Ben and Jake were on their thirties. They were still on their twenties. Yeah. I think they were, they were young enough for, for trying uh, this, this, uh, this way of making music. I, I had a, a big influence uh, on uh, the way of perceiving, thinking, feeling music coming from Steve Coleman and um, um, a lot of workshops from from you know that I, that I went and, and I did of, of him. I I'm very I'm super I will say like positive that his contribution to music is unique and is something that is really adding to war, to what jazz is going or where jazz is going to. And um, the first album was with the exercise of no music is written. We just need, we, we just clap and do the rhythm patterns, the melodies and, 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 and bass. And then, and then how, that's how we, that's how we got together the music. The second album is all written, but I yeah. think that that gave us a language that gave, gave us a door of trust between, between us for developing our, our music. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great way to first get a group together and then get everybody comfortable and trusting to play off of each other and interact with each other within the music the way you did the first one where there wasn't any music written. It was like you were interacting and going back and forth and, and all of that. I could totally see how then everybody's ears open up and they're listening so much more and they're listening and playing off and probably taking a lot of chances, which now moving into this new recording, Life and Umbrella, you can hear the interaction. You can hear how comfortable everybody is with it. So that had to be one of those key techniques that you did. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I, I'm i very happy with that. My, I I, uh, I think that, that, again, I was very, very lucky to find these guys to be able to do so many get-togethers, rehearsals, or workshops, or whatever you want to call yeah. that uh when 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 we were needing that so yeah super happy with that Mike. <laughs> well congratulations on the new recording all right life and umbrella one more time javier redmusic.com everything's going to link up down below as well and of course constellation 3111 north western avenue 8 30 p.m august 11th friday and then 8 and 10 at the jazz showcase on august 30th wednesday 806 South Plymouth, jazzshowcase.com. Javier, thanks for taking a few minutes out of the vacation. And uh, we look forward to having you back in town and performing at these great shows. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for this time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your years. I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you, Chicago Jazz Magazine. I I hope uh, I hope to see you at some point as, or at you know, some of the one of the shows. <laughs> uh, we need to meet in person finally, right? We need to meet in person. Yeah. <laughs> So thanks, thanks for taking a few minutes. And of course, I want to thank everybody for watching. As I always say, all information at chicagojazz.com. And until next time, hopefully I will see everybody out on the scene.